to the information session for Certificate 3 in Individual Support, focusing on aged care. Our first slide for today uh, is not working as we would wish, and so we actually want to let you know that there is a Q&A panel of people waiting to answer your questions. And if you could just type your questions in at the bottom, these will be addressed at the end. So my name is Sally Walker and I'm your presenter today. Also behind the scenes, we have Caro Van Riet, who is our producer, Kathy McDonald, who will be joining us at the end of the session to answer your questions, and Emily from our admin team is here to assist you also. Kathy, Caro and I are all teachers from this team. When you come to study at TAFE, what will you be learning about during your time in this course? A lot of the things that you will be learning are up on this screen. There is effective communication, different models of support in the ageing sector, how to deliver effective support to people who are ageing. And as is very important, understanding and following national standards relating to supporting people who are ageing. Understanding how to recognise and report situations that are of concern. As well as this, you'll be supporting people who are showing and living with dementia and you'll be working with people who have mental health issues. During your time of studying the course, we have specific units that you need to be competent in. There is 13 units altogether. There are seven, which is the core units, and we have six electives. So your seven core units are to provide individualised support, support independence and well-being, communicate and work in health or community services, work with diverse people, work legally and ethically, recognise healthy body systems and follow safe work practices for direct client care. So they're our core units. Our elective units are to facilitate the empowerment of older people provide support to people living with dementia, meet personal support needs, deliver care services using a palliative approach, comply with infection prevention and control policies and procedures, and as we mentioned before, working with people with mental health issues. It's really important that you remember that at the end of your study here, there is a compulsory component of 120 hours minimum where you need to work in an aged care facility. This is done over a four week period. You will not be needing to do night shifts, working on public holidays or doing any weekend work. The delivery is on our campuses statewide. So in the Northwest, we deliver from our Devonport campus and our Devonport campus is located on Valley Road. The Avonvale campus in the north of our state is on Allenvale Road, Newnham. And in the south of the state, it's delivered at our Clarence campus which is located in Bounty Street, Warrain. There are many different learning modes and that's to cater for everybody's different learning styles. So we do work on campus where it's project work, group work, and we do presentations. There's always our practical skills learning group work. Then there's also our online learning. So some of this is structured and some unstructured, but there'll always be a teacher there available and it's for online and practical assessment activities. 
And again, remember always that four weeks at the end of work placement within a residential facility. In regards our timetable, classes are between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. As we've mentioned in the previous start slide, learning is blended. It's a blend of face to face and online. The thing that's really important for you to know is the course requires attendance at all classes as per the timetable, which you will receive on your first day attendance. But you must attend all classes for your attendance to be recorded, especially if you are someone who is needing to report to Centrelink that you are attending a full time course. So breaking the timetable down a little bit further, it's good for you to know that it runs over 12 weeks. In that, in over 20 weeks, this consists of four days a week of teacher facilitated blended learning each week. And at the conclusion of 16 weeks learning, there's the compulsory four week work placement. In the northwest at our Devonport campus and in the north in our Allenvale campus, the start dates are the 18th of July and it finishes on the 2nd of December. And the days that it's run is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. In the south of the state, it's run at from our Clarence campus starting on the 19th of July and also finishing on the 2nd of December. But the days down south are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And as mentioned before, although there may be different days, they are all running from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. What other courses do we have that's available statewide during 2022? We have first aid courses. We have first aid courses in mental health. We have disability skill sets. If you want to know more about these courses, please go to the website where you will find further information regarding dates of these courses. And just as a heads up for 2023, there will be more full time courses in aged care and part time courses. In the south of the state, these courses will be the part time courses will be run in the evening. But again, please check the website to confirm confirm the subjects, the dates and the times of any of our courses. So along with the timetable information that we've discussed and we've discussed how it covers four days a week, we do recommend that you set aside an additional six to eight hours per week for self study, for researching things and for the completion of your assessments. Students who do not complete progression milestones will be invited to attend a meeting with the teacher to discuss their progress and how we can help with this. The work placement that I've been talking about and saying that all students must attend under and it must be a minimum of 120 hours in this course. It has shifts involved in it and the shifts in a nursing home can start at seven o'clock in the morning and go till three o'clock in the afternoon or they can start at three o'clock in the afternoon and go to 11 o'clock in the evening. As mentioned before, all shifts will be scheduled on weekdays. There'll be no night, weekend or public holiday shifts. To go on a work placement, there are certain responsibilities that you need to do or organise. And one of these is to manage your home time and any other commitments that you have so that you can attend the placement shifts that are allocated to you. 
you need to be able to organise transport to and from the allocated facility. It is law that you have a national police check to be able to work in an aged care facility. And it's also a requirement of many places now to have a working with vulnerable people card. There's also immunisations that you must obtain that are required for you to enter an aged care facility. So with COVID-19 very prominent in our worlds, your vaccinations are required and you need to be up to date with your flu vaccinations also. If you're not vaccinated, you may jeopardise your options to complete the course and gain employment. And the dates for your work placement are the 7th of November to the 2nd of December. Also, you, if you have children, you will need to organise childcare if that's applicable to you. You don't need to organise your placement though. This is done to you by TAS TAFE's placement coordinator. There's a team of people and they help you find a placement that's suitable to you and they'll give you some choices. Again, for work placement, there are other things that you need to be. You need to be physically fit. You need to be able to be working on your feet for up to eight hours a day. You need to be able to accept all types of diverse people as you'll be working with clients and colleagues who may have different backgrounds, cultures and beliefs to you. You need to be able to prove you have no criminal offences related to theft, supply or use of illicit drugs, assault or murder. And this will be recorded on your national police check. Now some information for you as you to prepare to consider applying for this course. There are course entry requirements. TASTAFE is committed to supporting applicants into the study program that will best suit your goals, your needs and your abilities. All applicants will need to complete the basic key skills builder up to the exit level of level two. What is the BKSB? So the basic Key Skills Builder is an online assessment tool that is used to review your literacy and numeracy, so your English and your math skills. It's offered to students at TAS TAFE who are undertaking most of our qualifications. Upon completion of the, using the tool, a level is given which is matched to the Australian Core Skills Framework. And then this level is used to inform teaching staff how to better support you as a student, as well as to provide a benchmark for entry to specific courses. Course fees. The standard course fee is $1,424. That is for a full fee paying stu student. If you are someone who is receiving a concession, a healthcare card from Centrelink, your fee is $370. There are two different payment options that you have. You are able to pay the full payment at the time of your enrollment or you're able to enter into a payment plan that runs over the duration of the course. Now there is refunds available and this is really important because if you start the course and then decide, oh no, this isn't what I really think I want to do after all, it's really important that you tell us because you may be eligible for a refund. If you haven't undertaken more than 20% of the course, 
you will be eligible for a refund and what we call it is a by the census date. The census date for these courses statewide is Friday the 12th of August. So you get to start the course, see how it goes. Hopefully you love it and keep going to the end. But if you don't or something happens in your life, you've got to that time to withdraw. There are a few other costs that you need to consider when you are applying to work and study in aged care. There's the compulsory national police check. The cost for that is $45. Working with a vulnerable people card, that's $18.60. There's a course resource fee of $50. And our students, when they go on placement, wear a Taz Tafe black polo shirt. And the cost for that and to get it embroidered is approximately $40. There's an amazing textbook that costs $95. It's not compulsory, but it is recommended. So it is up to you. You will need a pair of black trousers for working in our industry and black closed in shoes. And also remember there may be a cost for flu and other vaccinations that are required by the aged care sector. And with that textbook, there are probably some copies in your library, but as a student, you have a limited borrowing period of these because they're in high demand. And you'll know more about that when you come in to do your um, induction. But yes, if you can get your own, it's great. To achieve success in your studies, you need to be able to demonstrate the ability to link the theory knowledge that you learn to the practical skills. You need to be able to demonstrate that to us here on campus and then also when you go out on placement. You need to be able to meet industry standards during the course and when on placement. You need to have the ability to complete all required documentation to a level acceptable for the course and again also for industry requirements. But we will teach you these skills when you study with us. And of course, remember that you need to be successful. You need to complete that minimum 120 hours practical placement. Now, how on earth do you apply? Well, applications open on the 30th of May at 12 o'clock midday. To apply, you need to visit our website, go to the apply and enroll page, and there's a presentation there. So watch our applying at TAS TAFE presentation. After you've submitted your application, keep an eye on your emails as we will advise you the outcome of your application or if we need further information from you. After you've submitted your application, I would suggest you also keep an eye on your spam just in case it's dropped into that area of your computer rather than where you can easily find it. When you study at TAS TAFE, we have lots of assistance here for students. We have student counsellors, disability liaison officers, international student advisors, and we have the Aboriginal Vocation Education and Training Program team. The people in this team are offered to, able to offer you a large range of services. So you are able to have support with additional literacy and numeracy requirements, your study skills, advice about financial assistance, counselling issues, 
any support in an area of disability and your career planning. All this support is free. And when you become a student, you can access these services by calling 1300 655 307 to make an appointment. But we'll give you further information about that in the, in the day you enrol. Now this actually concludes our formal presentation. So it's time for us to answer your questions. So Caro and Kathy mm. and Emily, if we have some questions, please. Thank you very much, Sally, for that very comprehensive presentation. And can you hear me OK, Sally? Yes, I can. Wonderful. And again, apologies to everyone. We had a few technical issues, so hence starting a little bit later. But I have a question for Kathy and Sally. There's a from Nick. Thanks, Nick. I have completed Certificate 3 in Individual Support Disability in March this year. Can I apply for credit transfer? Nick, you certainly can apply for credit transfer and what we might even be able to do is run a specific tailored course for um, an aged care skill set or if not, we would work out with our timetables which units you needed to um, study to complete your aged care certificate three. Fantastic. Thank you, Sally. And there's another one here about the application process. Um, this is, might be one for Emily. And thanks again, Emily, for joining us from uh, administration. It's really valuable to have your input. So how does a prospective student go about applying? And is there a, a video available online, Emily, to assist with this process? Thank you, Caro. Uh, yes, there is. So Sally mentioned this video on how to apply and you can find that on our website. I believe her presentation had a little snippet of what you will see on our website. It will say how to apply and you can um, watch the presentation there. Once you're ready to apply for individual support, you can find the individual support page on our website. And you'll be able to scroll down and look at our classes which are available and there will be a, an apply button beside that class and that's where you can apply for individual support. Fantastic, thank you so much Emily and there's a question here, thanks for that. <clears throat> Is this information session available to be rewatched? Yes it will be, it's actually recorded and it will be available on the website and just back to applications, Emily, when when do they open applications? Applications will open on Monday the 30th of May at 12 o'clock midday. Wonderful. So would it be first in best dress then, Emily, another question? Applications will be addressed by um, earliest application first. So the earlier you get your application in, the sooner we'll look at your application to enrol you in the class. Thank you, Emily. And one here from Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Of the f this is for Sally and Kathy. Of the four day classes each week, which of those days are on campus in the south? Um, I think, and thank you, Kara, I think it's going to be uh, something that you will find out when you actually attend your first session. So, uh, yeah, I think you just maybe would need to wait to find out until we're a little bit closer to the time. Thank you, Sal. And Kathy, did you want to add anything? Um, hi, Kara, thank you. Um, no, this year um, so far it has been two days online and two days on campus and that will probably be how it will be run for this semester as well. 
And I guess, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sally and Kathy, but we know that we're definitely in uh, on Fridays, isn't it? Friday is one of the days on um, campus. Yes, definitely in Fridays. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you both. And another one, a question here. Is this course being offered on a part time basis for 2022? The part time course for 2022 has already commenced and a part time course runs over the duration virtually of the entire year. So as I mentioned before, there will be one next year and it will be run down south in the evening time. And I can't give you any um, up to date information about dates and things, but if you keep an eye on the website, then that will definitely give you um, dates probably around November. We'll have finished planning for next year and you'll be able to see that information then. Thank you very much, Sally, and a great question. Wonderful questions here. And there's one from Kylie. I don't have any certificates in any support in ageing. Uh, Mum of five and children and have apps. So how would I work around them? And if I do this in class, I, I suspect, Kylie, you might mean work around having the kids looked after. I think that's the way I'm seeing it. Please add another chat if I'm misinterpreting your question, but I think it's more to do with is there an opportunity to uh, complete the course with uh, having five kids and is it not as it possible, but there's a lot of commitments there, Carly, is what I'm hearing. Hmm. What What can we offer to make it a little bit easier? Kathy, do you want to respond to this? Oh, thank you, Sally. Um, I think I'm not sure of your circumstances, Kylie, but if you have children at home and you're trying to study online and that was a problem for you, you can always come into TAFE and use our library resources if you can get someone to mind the children for you. When we work online, um, you can talk to your teacher about your individual circumstances and we can try and work out a plan for you. I know through our support services, you can talk to, um, you can get some cash rebates if you are putting your children into childcare. I don't know if I've really answered your question, but I know that we have had students and we currently have students studying that have got a number of children. If it helps you and you would potentially have childcare available to you during the day, you might like to consider the evening course for next year. I hope I've answered your question, Kylie. Fantastic. And Kylie's added a little bit. Yes, to work around school and their apps. Apps, maybe, maybe appointments, Kylie. If you could reply yay or nay there. But um, I think you have, Kathy, for sure. I guess the only thing, sorry to interrupt, Cara, is just to reiterate about four weeks compulsory placement. Yeah, um, Kylie would need to mm. do that and she would yeah. need to organise childcare for that. Wonderful. Yep. And thank you, Kylie, for that really good question. And as Kathy and Sal mentioned, we do have a lot of students with uh, children, of course, but uh, TASTAVE is all about flexible learning and we try everything we can to make your pathway to attaining a qualification uh, possible where we can. And another question, this would be for you, Emily, what fee would be applicable, applicable, excuse me, to me if I am on a 491 visa? So on a 491 visa, you would need to supply your state nomination letter. That's just for us to see that US, your state nomination is here in Tasmania. 
And if you're able to supply that, the um, fee would be the subsidised rate, and that would be 1,424. Thank you, Emily. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Great. And Nick, again, thanks, Nick, for all your questions. Thank you for your presentation. Can you provide the TASTAFE email? I believe, Sal, it might be at the end of, yes. Here we go, Nick, if you're still there. But again, this session is recorded. So it's health.admin at tastafe.tas.edu.com au and it doesn't have to be in capitals that that doesn't matter that bit um, and one from sarah thanks sarah if you need to change to part-time study can you switch to part-time and receive credit for units you have already completed full-time thank you sal or kathy i believe this year that may have been possible we are going to be uh, going over to a new assessment next or next year at some point in time. So I guess if you're thinking that you're not going to be able to complete the full time one, it may be better to wait for the part time one. Um, Kathy, you may want to add to that. Um, no, I think um, I think you've covered it. It might be an expensive way to do the training because you would then need to apply next year if you only do some this year. A lot of the units have the placement um, joined to them for a better word. So if you do the theory for the unit, you need the placement to sometimes get the result for the unit. I hope that makes sense. Yep, that's great, Kathy and thanks, Sal, Kathy. Very, very clear. Thank you. And Carly, thanks, Carly, for uh, clarifying that for me for the children's appointments. Yep, understand. And hopefully your question was answered, Carly, there. And Sarah, thanks, Sarah. How do I arrange, this is one for Emily, how do I arrange to pay my fees in instalments? Thanks, Emily. So you can set up an instalment payment plan, plan through our client service facilities. So we've got a client service reception desk at each campus, or you can also reach them via our call centre. Um, apologies, I don't remember that phone number off the top of my head. Can any of our be on the web? It would be on the website, Emily, anyway, for people to be able to find, wouldn't that? That's correct. Yeah, you'll be able to see our call centre phone number on our website and you'll be able to find that number and set up an instalment plan. Fantastic. Thank you, Emily. And one from John here. <clears throat> John, this is for Sal or Kathy. What happens if you have holidays that are booked and you'll miss two weeks of the course? I think one of the best things is that you speak to the teacher about that if it's going to impact your study, that you see if you're able to maybe do some pre study so that you've actually done some of the work that was going to happen while you're away and you may have a little bit to do when you come back but I guess it will really depend on your ability to knuckle down and make sure that you've got it prepared as well as be prepared to do a little bit of catch up at the end and it may even depend what topic is being taught at that time as to how that might affect you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much Sally. That's an Really, really terrific questions coming through. I have another one here. Are you open to older students? I'm over 60 and I've had 10 years as a full time carer for my late mum who was blind and who had dementia. Uh, I'll hand this one over to Kathy or Sally. Um, thank you, Kara. Lovely question. Thank you. Um, 
We welcome students of all ages at TAS TAFE and having a lived experience will only assist with your learning and I'm sure you'll have a lot of information that you can contribute to the class if you do choose to join us. Beautiful Fantastic. response, Kathy. Beautiful. Indeed, <clears throat> and a great question. And Emily, this was in relation to the um, the visa number 491, I think it was. And the person replied, yes, I can supply a state nomination letter. That's fantastic. And another question is, if I've paid for the course and I choose the course is not for me, um, do I lose all my money? Might be one for Emily, this one, I think. Um, if you decide it's not the course for you before that census date um, or the cooling off date, which was the 12th of August, if you decide before that date, you can receive a full refund. If it's after that time, um, there won't be any eligible refunds. Wonderful. Thanks, Emily. And another one for you. Are oh, you a box of chocolates, I reckon? <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, how many days does it take on average for confirmation of enrolment if we apply on the 31st of May on average? Uh, that's an interesting question um, as there it, there's not a set time frame for confirmation of enrollment. I believe we hope to enrol people as soon as we can and we would need to reach our minimum numbers for the class before that occurs. So unfortunately I can't give a time frame on that one because it's still all very indecisive. It's a waiting on on making sure we have enough people in the class before we can send confirmation of enrolments to that class. Wonderful, terrific. I think we've probably, I'm just checking and thanks Emily. <clears throat> Thank you also to Sally. I can't see any more questions up here. Has anyone got any more? Some terrific overall, the questions were great. Um, yeah, I guess I, I think... would I would like to say, Caro, just if people have a moment afterwards where they do think of them, and I'm sure you're going to remind them anyway, don't feel that you don't have the opportunity to ask. Just send them to the web, to the email address on your slide and somebody will get back to you ASAP with the answer you need. Wonderful, Sally, and I'm just having a quick look just before we end today's session. Any other questions, type them in now. And if I've replied to some of them on a one on one, then you've got the answer. Um, so it looks all good. Let's have a look. Yep, I'm just writing down this number. So before we go, Sally, is there anything else you'd like to add or Kathy? What I would like to add is that if you do come to our courses, you will really enjoy the learning. It is a wonderful area to work in to assist people that are aging. It's a privilege to be in this area. Make sure that it's something that you really are passionate about and that you really want to do. As I mentioned before, Kathy, Caro and myself are part of the teaching team here. We are passionate about having people in industry who are supportive of people remaining independent for as long as possible. So if that's how you feel inside of you, this is the course for you. Great, thanks Sal. And just before we end, I have got a few more questions. One for Emily again. Uh, we have to do we have to pay in a stipulated time period before the class starts or can we pay until census date or cooling off period, Emily? 
um, your invoice will have a due date prior to the start of your class. Um, if you'd like to set up an instalment plan, you can do that and that will be payments throughout your studying time. Um, but the invoice is due before your course commencement. Wonderful. And Emily, I guess in the census date or the calling off period, if people choose not to go on, do they receive that money back then? Yes, if they've withdrawing from their course prior to the census date. Yep. yep. Um, when they let us know if they can supply their bank data details, I'll get a full refund. Great. Thank you, Emily. And lovely. Thank you from Sarah. Thank you all for your assistance. Really great answers. Thanks everyone to our panel. And how long is the course? 20 how weeks. Long? 20, 20 weeks. So that includes the placement, Karen. Yes. Uh, so it's sorry, I missed that. Kathy, say it again. I was just going to say that 20 weeks includes the four weeks compulsory placement. Wonderful. Thank you. And Karen, before we go, can I just add something? Of course. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. My name's Kathy. I'm one of the teachers in the South for aged care. I just wanted to say if anyone's thinking that they haven't studied for a long time or they're just not sure, I just want to encourage you to give it a go. Having people skills is a wonderful attribute. My background is that I was working in retail and made the change to working in aged care and I found it a really good fit. I hadn't studied for a long time and the support that is available at TAFE helped me start a new career in this industry. So just um, give it a go. Terrific. So true. Great Kathy. advice. Yep. And here we go. There's another question. What days are required to attend TAFE in the north? I that think that was up on the slide, wasn't it, Sal? It up in the north. The course runs Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. As to which days are actually in class or online, that is something that you would find out from when you contact people up north, and it probably would well definitely would be given that information when you're timetable information is supplied to you at the commencement of the course. Terrific, golly. So I'd like to just trial a little bit here. I'm going to pop Sally so you all know who Sally is. Sally, I'm going to pop you on the bear with me. So you are on. You should be on in a tick. There's Sally. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Terrific. And Emily, you're next. Can I just have you on camera? Maybe Kathy's next. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just popping Emily so you all know who you're chatting with. Emily's giveaway of M, you're on. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and now I'm going to pop Kathy. Kathy, you are heading live. <laughs> Hello, everybody. There, there you are. I suppose I better pop myself on, had I? I think that's a good idea, Cara. Was, that, Do you was, think? That, a was that a question without notice? <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me. You're still on, Cathy. I know. I can see a red box around me. <laughs> So I'm just going to do that, send myself live and the, the lighting is so poor in here. But anyway, <laughs> terrible light. So yeah, excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. OK, everyone. So thank you all for attending today. And when will the course starting in the south? Well, that'd be the, is it the 18th or 19th? Um, the 19th, it starts in the south and the 18th, yep. it starts in the north. Fantastic. All right, well, we might end this meeting, um, I think. So thanks again, everyone, for your patience.
despite all our technical difficulties, we we got there in the end. And thank you to Emily for attending and thank you for your terrific questions. I'm going to end this meeting now and there will be a recording. So thanks, Sal. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, See you later, Sarah. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.